Hey, welcome to Maximum Bass Speed. Want to do a video for you here today on why you're struggling with timing. Now, timing issues, from my experience, a lot of it has to do with just too much body movement. And I've done other videos on my channel on, on YouTube. Uh, one of them, I think, is Keep It Simple. And I've gotten a lot of uh, great uh, comments and people contacting me how just how much better their swing and efficient is just by simplifying the swing. And I'm going to show you here, this student came in from out of town and uh, I wanted to help him with his uh, timing issues because of what I did here when he got here on the left, I told him this is uh, before I even work with him. And I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, let's, let's record your swing. Let's see what's going on here on the left. All right. So what I did was I, what I did here for you here, so you can get an idea what we're going to uh, be covering here. I did this line right here. This is pretty much where he's starting right there at the end of his, uh, right there. You can see at the end of his little, uh, his, uh, uh, hip okay and then right here i drew a line pretty much where his knee is and everything okay so what i did was i said okay let's record this and i looked at the film and i was looking at it and i said okay normally i would want a player to stop like right here okay so what he did okay you see right here where he is and this is pretty much when i'm working with students i'm looking for this okay stop there and now the body should be working pretty much uh, forward at this time. But you can see here, he's going back, 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 back. And then he reaches the apex of his gather right here. And you can see here, it's pretty obvious that there's a pretty big gap between uh, that line, that yellow line in there. So if I just draw a circle right here, okay, and I'll just draw a circle right there between there, you can see that circle is pretty big, okay? Now, I'm just going to show you after I work with him pretty much where he was. So when he reached the apex of the gather right here, you can see if I do a circle, the circle is much smaller. OK, and this is great right here. This is this is much better. OK, and I'm going to show you a picture of when uh, he was getting a live pitch so that you can kind of see what he looked like. Uh, when when he was receiving live pitch after working on this for like an hour and a half. OK. So my point is this, okay, uh, when you're when you're playing baseball or softball, okay, think about this logically. If you're moving, just say, an extra eight frames additional to your swing, okay, you're working almost four swings, extra uh, frames going back, and then in order to get back to where you should be, you're working pretty much an extra four swing, four frames or so. It depends on the player. Some are three, some are even up to 12 frames extra on their swing now in a blink of an eye you can't really see it but if you break it down and you're wondering like you know for me as a coach okay you're telling me you're struggling i go well let's see what's going on with your body and if, now by seeing him what he did here i told him i said you're moving way too much going back and this is going to cause you to have too many extra frames to your swing and i told him think about this logically if you're playing with players that are pitching, okay, just say in the 90s, okay, and you're used to pitching someone that's throwing like mid-high 80s, you're not going to be able to catch up to the ball. And if you do, you're going to get lucky if you hit it because you're going to have to have perfect timing to, to, to actually achieve that kind of a task, you know, when your body is just moving too much. So again, I told him, I said, we need to minimize that. So what again, on the right, what I said to him, let's what I want you to do. And this is what I basically told him. I said, let's sit, let's lock your back knee in. Okay, lock it in. And I want you to feel, and this is what I what I actually told him, I want you to feel like there's kind of a laser pointing from your knee, kind of pointing in this direction like this. Okay. And I said, kind of keep it locked in right there okay so you're, you're feeling that that's going to pretty much just stay there now it's going to move a little bit but i want you to have that kind of a feeling and by doing that i told them it's going to help you first of all to get the lower body the lower body locked in so that it, you don't move your knee so much like he has here again he moved from here to way over there and his knee on the right actually on the left is actually now pointing kind of in this direction over here OK, and that is something that also causes the body to move too far back because your body is not positioned correctly when you're actually at setup. OK, so I also told them, I want you to feel a lot of good instep pressure right here and pressure inside the inner ankle and inner thigh. OK, that's going to help you to stop doing this moving all the way over here okay that's just a lot of movement and then you can see here he moved from this red line where he started all the way over here that's again 
way too much movement. So once I had them do that, what I also told them is when you take off, uh, when you uh, lift your front leg, I want you to immediately feel like your back tailbone is rotating. It's just rotating where your back tailbone is almost facing the pitcher. Like that's the kind of the feeling I wanted him to have instead of working like again on the left, he's kind of working laterally. Okay. He's working more linear uh, to on the, on the left, he's working linear towards the catcher, okay? He's working linear, watch this, working towards the catcher, his back hips working towards the catcher, working towards the catcher. And I said on the on the, on the the right, when we were working on it, I said, I want you to feel like you're immediately, when you lift your front leg, I want you to feel like you're rotating your pelvis, you're rotating your tailbone, and it's working more towards the pitcher, okay? So right here, again, he's at the apex of the gather right there, and you can see there's a a difference as far as like what's going on with his knee. Look at his knee. The difference in the gap here is much less. The distance as far as how much he moved back is a lot less. And again, this is, I told him, this is going to save you probably about, I told him before even he hit, it's going to save you about probably eight frames, just knowing what, how much someone moves, how many frames it saves a player. And I said, you're probably going to be saving about eight frames in your swing. Okay. So anyway, by doing that, I explained to him that this is going to make a swing more efficient, okay? So I'm gonna show you something here and I'm just gonna uh, give you an idea exactly what I, I'm referring to, okay? And I think this is gonna uh, kind of help you as well to understand and see this a little bit more clearly. Now, I'm gonna sync him up uh, together um, starting exactly at the same time, okay? Exactly at the same time, so you can kind of get an idea what I'm referring to, okay? Now, you're gonna see here, they're gonna be moving identically at the same time, right as they st start getting started. See that where the hands are, they're moving identically the same, okay? Now, watch what's going on here. On the right is the after, okay? And as he starts to swing, I'm just gonna uh, put him at the point of contact as he, as he hits the ball, as soon as he hits the ball, and I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna just stop when he hits it, okay? So he just hit it right there. Now. Watch what's going on before he got here. I'm going to start counting the frames of how many frames extra it takes him to hit the ball. Okay, he just hit the ball on the right. Now watch how many frames it's going to take him to hit the ball, to catch it to the ball. One frame, two frames, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames later, he hit the ball on the left and he already hit the ball again eight frames ago on the right. And he hit it just, you know, he, he hit it really very efficiently, very good. This young man, he was hitting in, uh, with a wooden bat close to 90 miles per hour. He, he was hitting like 86, 87 miles per hour with a wooden bat off the tee. And he's only 15 years old. OK, I mean, he was he was just tearing it up towards the end. He was just like really, really hitting very well. And when he was getting live pitch. He was just, I asked him, I said, how, how's it feel? You know, how does this, is it hard for you to adjust to this? He goes, no, it's actually very simple. And I can actually see the ball much better. And I had the gentleman that was pitching to him. He actually played uh, minor league baseball. He played in the pro league. And uh, he was throwing, you know, just, I told him, throw whatever you want at him. And uh, let's see what, how he does uh, with this new uh, gather and saving all this extra timing. Okay. And he did very, very well. So anyway, what I wanted to explain to you here is that it's very important for you to minimize the movement, okay? So I'm going to also show you another video here, and I'm going to uh, pull it up for you right here in a second. Okay, so this is the video that I was uh, mentioning that uh, when he did the live pitching, uh, he actually did better uh, as time went on towards the end of the lesson where he was just applying this so well. And again, uh, uh, the, the coach that was pitching to him was throwing, I told him, throw whatever you want, sliders, fastballs, try to fake them out. I just wanted him to understand how minimizing all that extra movement was going to allow him to see the ball uh, far better. Okay, just so much better. So anyway, as he gets his pitch and he's, he's right now, he says set up and I drew a, a little red line right there. OK, and I'll go ahead and uh, draw a little line for you right here again where the knee is so you can kind of see what's going on. I put it right down the middle of his leg, just like I did prior when I was doing the T work. So he's getting a pitch right here. He's getting into his gather 
and this is the apex of its gather right here. Look at this. This is the apex of its gather. Now the red line is just literally probably maybe a half an inch behind them. See that? It's just a half an inch, okay? So again, what I had them do, I had them lock in this knee, okay, just to help you guys out there. If you're a dad, mom, coach, do this with your players. I'm telling you, it works. This is this is proof, okay? I'm just trying to help you coaches out there, you parents out there. And by the way, give me a like so far if you like this video and uh, also subscribe to my channel if you like this video. And also what I was doing is like, again, I told them, I said, let's get this knee locked in and let's avoid this, all this moving back like you did off the tee. And immediately when you lift your front uh, foot, I want you to feel like you're rotating your tailbone towards the pitcher to prevent you from moving back and let's move rotational. That will help your body to eliminate all that movement going linear towards the catcher, but it'll be more rotational towards the pitcher. Okay, that's what you want. And I told him, let's do it with very smooth tempo. I don't want you to speed anything up. I just want you to minimize the movement going back, okay? So as he goes there, now he reaches the apex of the gather, gets to the ball, he gets to a beautiful toe touch right there, very balanced. It's holding the pullback really well right here. He's getting this pitch right there. And he hits it right here and just just explodes through it. And again, this pitch, this hitter right here, he like he was. I was clocking him in the high 80s by by the end of the video. And again, with a wooden bat, only being 15 years old. Okay. So anyway, in a nutshell, what I want you just to get away from this video is that minimal minimal movement definitely will help your swing. Okay. And the way you do it again is by locking in that back knee, getting that back uh, tailbone to immediately start rotating towards the pitcher. That's going to prevent you from moving back. Okay. And as you do that, like I always say, let that back elbow work up back and behind you. You want to use your core. You want to use your obliques. You want to use that scap load. Let that back elbow work up back and behind you and land balance that toe touch. Keep pulling back as you get into heel plant. And then once you get into heel plant, the core, the oblique, the, the front of the uh, lead shoulder take over, and you just let the barrel below the hands, barrel below the hands, all the way through full extension. Look how beautiful that extension is right there. That keeps your bat in the zone so much longer. Anyway, I do online video analysis. Get a hold of me at MaximumBassSpeed at gmail.com. Uh, again, I would love to help your child, your student. I, I work with coaches. I work from youth all the way to professional. And I really hope you like this video. And again, please give me a like if you liked it. And I, I really appreciate your viewership, okay? All right, everyone. God bless.